TLO, what's poppin'? We are on it. Twitch. We are not live. But you can leave a like and a comment. Subscribe. Turn on your post notification bells. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK. Uh, right above me, if we do go live if you and you miss it, this is where any highlights and things of that nature will be. Uh, don't forget, we also got merch. Yeah, get me. And we got the Patreon. We post Monday through Friday, man. Uh, anything that we can't put on YouTube, we put here. And if it gets blocked on YouTube, we also put it there. Uh, this is Talk TV again. I know I just watched some from them yesterday, but the, I only I wanted to watch two things from them. That one I watched yesterday and this one. Because I always be watching My 600 Pound Life. And I always look for like a UK one. And this is like the only like type of, just the only one I've ever seen, I guess. Salute to Talk TV, man. Go follow them, man. Of course, they got almost a million. So that's salutable in itself, man. Make sure I hit that like button. I am subscribed. So every time I see something about the UK that's interesting to me, I'm going to watch. Let's get into it. You don't leave this bed, do you? I, I don't leave this bed. No. Um, unfortunately, I can't because of my leg and health issues. I just decided to get like 15 Munster cans oh, and yeah. drink them all in one go. I did watch The Whale and I was a They will go. Mistake. Form of peace and with his old. Yeah. Um, yeah I... Wait, when does this. Oh, okay, we just started. A few years. They will throw me on it and that's happen at any moment. Turned it off and I started crying. I cried myself to sleep. Any, anything could happen at any moment with my heart lose up. Okay, so we. Cats. Oh, and yeah. drink them all in one go. I did watch The Whale and it felt like a horror movie to me. I, I turned it off and I started crying. I cried myself to sleep. Any, anything could happen at any moment. What's The Whale? With my heart, lose oxygen and that's it, suffocating and that's it. The only way to bring me back, they were saying that they will throw me on the floor if they can't resuscitate me. It was a few years ago, you had to be airlifted out of your mom's home. That was the most devastating time of my life. But now, that was a few years ago. I understand people be going through some things, but like getting so big where they gotta airlift you out of, they had to do construction to get bro out the crib is cr Go, you had to be airlifted out of your mom's home. That was the most- I'm streaming, I didn't even realize. My life. But now you're looking for a way out in the form of the drug Wagovi. You getting this drug now is a case of life or death. Yeah. Super morbidly obese and with a BMI more than triple that of an average overweight person, at just 33 years old, Jason Holton is believed to be Britain's fattest man. Jason, hi. Oh, hi there. Holly hi. from Talk TV, nice to meet hi, you. Nice hi, nice to meet you too. How are you hi, feeling hi. today? Yeah, um, yeah, I'm okay. Once a healthy, happy child, Jason is now 47 stone, unable to walk or... Hey Siri. Uh -huh. what, how much is 47 stone? 658 pounds? Is that a diaper? Or do anything other than play video games while his mother cares for him 24-7. Yeah. Talk to me about what you do day to day. You're, you don't leave. He smokes cigarettes too? Bed, do you? I, I don't leave this bed. No. Um, unfortunately, I can't because of my leg and health issues. I'm up in the morning. I have my care, personal care and everything. It's mainly consisting cigarettes and just listening to uh, some, some music. It's just that, really. And then if I want to turn the TV on, I'll turn the TV on and just watch maybe... Uh, some programs or something. Which ones? What music do you like? I'm interested. I need to know everything about this guy because what program? What t what what are you watching on TV? Like, 
DJ MC Nee and all the, all the old kind of ones, you know, because at that time, that's the time when I enjoyed life. How old is he? It's a very small room, isn't it? And obviously, as you've already mentioned, you can't leave your bed. Do you feel confined? Do you feel trapped? I am trapped. I just get to a point sometimes where I think I'm in my situation, I'm in, and, you know, I just get upset. I, I, the way I do it is cry, and then cry myself to sleep, and then wake up. That's the way I. That's that. that nah, I, I'm not even gonna lie. This is depressing. That sounds depressing. Like a lot of us, you know, we're in a body conscious. we everybody wants to have a perfect body these years, 2023, 2022, and, and social media will, has a way of lying to us and thinking that these. Everybody's perfect on the internet. It's not. Somebody could, if you look at yourself in the mirror and you think you, you it's okay to think you're not where you want to be, but don't go to society standard because, and look at this dude. It, it'd be worse. This is, I can't even get my words together. This is so. Sort things out and then I'm refreshed. My mind's refreshed. Is it? And what is it specifically that sort of brings you to tears, Jason, about your That situation? I can't sit up and get up to, to do what was right in the first place, to move. You've completely lost um, mobility in your legs. The mobility in my legs, no way, it can't happen. I can't stand, I can't walk or anything. I have to be in this bed. Uh, yeah, that's it. At one time, he ate crisps for breakfast with down 15 monster energy drinks in a row and devoured huge portions of Donner meat every day, consuming up to 10,000 calories. How much do you weigh right now? I would say not, n no more than when I was discharged, around the 245, 255 area of kilograms, yeah. And what were you at your worst? Over 365 kilograms at my... Hey Siri, huh? what's 365 kilograms in pounds? 365 kilograms is 804.69 pounds. My days, like what? Well, okay. Yeah. Okay. At your worst, what would you eat? The consistent of my diet. It's a great question, ma'am. Talk to us. It was one meal a day. Yeah. But I stuffed my family's face with land on me, with no sauce, no salad, no bit of bread, nothing. And then sometimes I would have chips. Just straight meat. Just straight donor kebab meat. This is a this is an ongoing theory on the side but sometimes I wouldn't and then I've got the juices and the Diet Coke yeah I had a problem with energy drinks because I couldn't drink alcohol or take drugs I just decided to get like 15 Munster cans oh, and yeah. drink them all in one go as many as 15 energy drinks in one go yeah yeah you've been sort of labelled with the type and do what though like and do what like Okay, I had a Monster Energy drink yesterday, or a couple days ago. Was it yesterday? Yesterday was Monday? Yeah, it was Monday yesterday I had a Monster. But I had the sugar-free of Blue Can. You know what I'm saying? I'm sure he not Blue Can in it. He got to be Green Can all the way, unfortunately. Um, like, what did you do? Like, like it gave you energy. Like, you get up, like... <laughs> You can move around, you know what? I told Britain's biggest man. Yeah, Britain's biggest man. Yeah. How does that make Put your you shirt. Um, it makes me feel awful. Like a horror film. I did watch The Whale, and it felt like a horror movie to me. I had to turn it off. I was crying my eyes out, my, my mum. I said to my mum, I said, don't watch it. I, I turned I'm it gonna off. I'm going to watch it. And I started crying, I cried myself to sleep in that film. I don't know how someone. I've never seen the. What's the whale? Did that film? To me, it was a horror movie. Because 
with what they were saying, how someone is that size and how the film was done. That's not me, because it was very upsetting for me. Jason wasn't always this way. Jason was a this was Jay happy, happy. Jason. This was Jason? Jason, bro, what happened? What happened? Who broke your heart? All right, talk to me. Wasn't always this way. Jason was a healthy, happy boy, wasn't he, when he was a child? What was yeah. he like as a boy? Oh, he was lovely, yeah. <laughs> always out and about with his friends and, you know, yeah. He was very busy. Oh yeah, that's that was when I was at my mum's place. And that's my little brother on the left hand side. James. And he was only about three months old. Yeah. Yeah, nice big eyes. And, <laughs> and what do you think when you look back at that photo of him now? Yeah. Oh yeah, I know. It's lovely. Jubbly? Here's one thing you need to do before I didn't know you had that one. <laughs> Talk to me about what kind of child you were. What memories have you got from childhood before? Well... Because you were healthy, I, weren't you? You were a healthy boy. I, I was a healthy boy as in, like, always physical and active and always walking, always on riding my bike miles, you know, push bike miles and riding it miles and everything. Mm. Always, but I was always chubby and always got to a bigger size all the time. That's when we were in Marbella in Spain. And what do you think when you look at that? He's obviously so happy there. Yeah, he's so happy there. Yeah, y'all was outside travelling. It's going to be all right, you know. Does it make you sad to look at it in that sense, though? Sometimes it does, yeah, because, uh, you know, he's so normal there, isn't he? He's just doing what he wants to do and running about and everything. And you wish that for yeah. him again? Yeah. It was a happy childhood. I still can't go back, want to go back there and restart my life. But it's not I know possible. I can't change the ways I was with, towards not only food, fluid, everything really. When was it you first noticed, do you think that there might have been a problem with his weight? When he was getting a bit older, I reckon. You know, he started swelling up and everything. And he was probably, I don't know, he was out with his friends getting takeaways or something, you know. Like, so, yeah, you know. like, what was the, like, how, like, what was the plan? Take me through a day in the life of Jason. Like, I need to know. The food for him. He'd go out with his mates and have food. But he didn't have a lot to eat. This is what we can understand. Cap! Where did this all begin, do you think? Oh, I think I had hidden problems at school. As a teenager, I didn't show that I was eating any time anyway. Mainly out in the day, and then at night have a large meal, big meal. Large, large meal, and cooked a lot. I was cooking pasta, tuna and pasta, chicken and pasta. Tuna so and secret pasta? eating. From tuna and pasta go together? Sort of early teens. Jason blames mental health problems and bullying at school as being behind his weight gain. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about, man. man. Like, you don't never know what's going on in nobody's life when you at school picking on people, man. Leading people alone, man. Worry about yourself. And if you are at school picking on somebody, what's going on in your life where you're projecting on to somebody else like this? Bullies get no respect. So, I don't know. <laughs> Were you bullied? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I was bullied, but I got through it. What's Just it? got through it by laughing it off, you know. So. That must have been difficult, though. Yeah, yeah. Added to the strain on the... Um, yeah, but I knew what I was. I was fat anyway, so... 
It didn't bother me, but me as a... It did bother you, obviously. You're still not even dealing with what's going on internally. If you're just saying, oh, I was this, but it didn't bother me. What are you talking about? It did bother you. You In general, if it was the other way around, I wouldn't go saying things like that to people. What were they saying? Uh, Just like, oh, trouble ups, fatty, or things like that. Do you think you were depressed at that time? And that affected your relationship with food, maybe? Yeah. And as I said, I even though I looked happy and throughout my school and socialising, there's always what's happening really inside. No one knows, you know. He says the death of his father when he was three also had an impact. I knew it was a moment. And that's the moment I knew. See, I thought somebody had broke your heart and you had fell into this depression thing. You wasn't dealing with it well. But that that'll do it. At three years old, you remember. Maybe if I had my father around, around, maybe there would be rules set to what I'm eating and stuff. You know, to stop me from putting things like that in my mouth, you know. But uh, there wasn't, you know. And you never listen to your mum. I don't know... I've just been like that, you know. I'm just, that's how I am. Over the last few years, Jason's health has rapidly declined as a result of his increasing size. He's come close to death now a number of times. Yes, he has, about four times, three or four times. Because he also had sepsis as well, which he missed out. He had sepsis and he was seriously ill in a coma then. That was touch and go. You know. So you was near death four times and none of that made you want to turn around, like turn it around or nothing? Within a few days, he was, they said he was going to be all right, but they said he was critical at first. I have the problem with the lymphedema, which I, is visible, it should be visible anyway. You can see the, the leg. Oh, oh, God. And then mainly as well. It moves from time to time and reduces from time to time and then gains from time to time. I've got it here. It's all here. And then it sometimes it just travels back this side. It looks painful. The problem is, is that if the fluid builds up in the heart and lung, that's when the game is over. It's game over for me. Because of my oxygen levels, I have to constantly get the sleep at machine to push my heart you know just to keep surviving you know to keep the breath before i go unconscious hey honestly this is no way to live you're barely living just you've had organ near organ failure a number of times blood clots respiratory failure strokes and if, if i'm if i'm not if i'm hearing this correctly he be out of like out of breath just sitting there so you got to use the machine to breathe to your mobility haven't you and that's and youtube i'm not poking fun i just want to understand like what happened what how how put you in hospital a number of times recently hasn't yeah you? yeah how many times do you think you've cheated death then i suppose you ain't really cheating it you ain't cheating it what, as what I know, maybe three or four, but then the hidden times I don't know because apparently I've been told they're not allowed to say. Could be more than four times, yeah, but they're not allowed to say sometimes if there was a problem. They don't have to, I mean, you know, the National Health Service. Any, anything could happen at any moment with my heart, lose oxygen and that's it, suffocating and that's it. And the only way to bring me back, they were saying to me that they will throw me on the floor if they can't resuscitate me. They'll just budge you on the floor and resuscitate you. I don't know what to do. How, what, wait, what, did, what does that even mean? Budge you on the floor to resuscitate? Like, first of all, budging on the floor, impossible. They would need, they couldn't just, you know what? Because I don't want to be thrown about. If, if, if I die, I just want to die. How did you feel, like, when you said about being thrown on the floor? Did you feel dehumanised in that sense? 
I felt like I was just nothing. In 2020, he collapsed and had to be airlifted by crane in his mother's flat, a team of more than 30 firemen and engineers. Like there's something attached to the front. It's a, I think it's a man, it's a man in a bed. I think they're bringing him out now, they're bringing him out of the window now. You have had a number of times where you've had to visit hospital, and one of those times was a few years ago where you had to be airlifted out of your mom's home. Shouldn't have did that, it made no sense, man. Can yeah. you tell me about that? Fulfill may look. That don't make no sense. That's crazy. Why would his mom get an apartment on the top floor? Doesn't even make sense. I mean, you gotta live where you gotta live, but that just sounds crazy. How did he get in there in the first place? That was the most. His childhood home? Devastating time of my life. What was that experience like for you? It must have been pretty terrifying to be airlifted out of your mom's home. The terrifying part of it all was the amount of people outside. I didn't know there were so many services out there. Uh, police, ambulance, just over this. And look right now, I'm thinking, oh my God, everyone's going to be, there's going to be crowds of people, and there were but they were all in their homes looking. And I think that's what, it just comes straight to me. Uh, Was it quite a sobering yeah. moment for you, that? Quite a sobering moment in terms of sort sobering of where you were at. what that mean? So that's why I was saying, can't we just leave, you know? Why, what's the hold up? You know, because even though I, I wasn't, I was still critical, but it wasn't about that. It was about, I didn't want, I wanted this to all clear up so no one knows that it had happened, but it was... It's too late, right? It was, it was too tough for me. During his most recent hospital visit, clinicians considered taking him to London Zoo to use their scanning equipment. They were talking... Y'all not gonna keep disrespecting my boy like that. Like, to the, they wanted to take bro to the zoo? To use their medical equipment. I mean, you got to do what you got to do to save your life, but like, come on now. Talking about taking you to London Zoo. How'd you feel correct? about that? Yeah. Why? To be examined properly. It ain't funny. Well, take the smile off. Through the x ray. Yeah. I know it, it sounds insane, but it was that, yeah. So they didn't uh, have equipment that could properly. No. test or examine you. No. What was it like for you when they said that they might have to take you to the zoo? I mean, how did that feel for you personally? I mean, was that quite hard to hear? No, because I knew, I knew what, what, how I view myself in a picture. My size is completely says it all. Do you know what I mean? So that's how yeah, well, do I know. wasn't too shocked. After his latest brush with death, Jason moved back into this custom-built council bungalow in Surrey, fitted with specially reinforced furniture. Who did this bungalow? Who the made... council? Okay. So see, this is now see, this is why the council be so backed up, and y'all be complaining because they building special bungalows and things of that nature like this. Like, this is, like, double door to the door, like, come on. And did you apply for a grant for that? How did that work? Yeah, they had to put... Like, from scratch they built this? Apply for a grant first, and then uh, get the builders in to do all the work, yeah. OK. OK. I don't know exactly how much it costs, but they don't never tell you anyway. Yeah. Work they did do was this bathroom. It was a tiny bathroom. But Jason doesn't go to the toilet right. because he no, can't move. No. No. Talk me through then. Oh my God, I just thought about that. The diaper is for number ones and twos. So who's, like, how, like, what, like, when a number two occurs and he's sitting down on it like, you know, roll, like, who's, who's wiping and cleaning and what? Like, that's, nah, bro. These double doors, this is something that's changed 
Yeah, this used to be a single door here mm -hmm. down to the bedroom, but they have doubled the size now. Kitchen double door. Yeah. I mean, all the doors. And then this big. is where there, you sleep. There was yeah, there was a small window here, but they had to um, put the door in and uh, and they did all of the. If you go out here, they did all of the concrete out here as well. You're essentially now his full-time carer. You sleep yeah. here, don't you, in yeah. the room next to Jason, Jason. So I can hear him. Can you sort of... So why do they do all that to her room? What's, so what's special about Jason's room then? Just to describe what you do day-to-day -day for me for Jason. Washing, food and the drinks. Obviously, because he's in bed, he can't do anything for himself. So what if you just say no to certain stuff and bring, like, substitutes? Because, like, what, what, what's the worst that could happen? He can say no and get mad? Like, he's gonna still, you still gotta eat it. He's always calling me. Hi, right, Mum. Is it okay for um, a bowl of uh, bran flakes? Okay, see, that's just cereal. That ain't bad, right? Oh, thank you, Mum. Right, thanks. Uh, no, thanks. I've got some water there. Maybe later sure. I'll have an orange juice or something, yeah? And how difficult is that for you and for your Ish. mom, sort of day to day, carrying out these responsibilities, looking after you? How does that make you feel? It, it, it's awful because I feel like. My mum, she's, she's put herself down, let herself go because of it, you know? And she always been by my side and never wants to change that. See, the thing is, if my mum wasn't here now, I'd be in serious trouble, big trouble, because the fact is, is that I can't pay for 24-hour care. Do you mm. feel guilty? That's what I, that was my next question. Like, you've literally, your mom raised you, now you're taking away her later years when you're an adult and she should be out, like, you know, doing whatever she wants. Now she's literally stuck. About that at all on your mom? I mean, how do you... You better uh, feel bad, at least. I think he does. For you, like you just oh, said, she's... I really do, yeah. You may think that this is just my mom's fault or something like that, but really, I don't know. It's just, it's just a diagnosis. It's really, my mum never. Me? It's just a diagnosis. I don't know about that statement. Convenient. Give Zin a spin for. Put that food in my body, or recommended it anyway. Parents, in particular, will no doubt watch this and. Given the round-the-clock care you now have to provide, think what an yeah. amazing job you do. Yeah. But it must. I bet you she cry herself to sleep sixty percent of the nights. Also, be very difficult for you. Oh, it is very difficult because I can't really leave my life. If you know what I mean. So you know, like going out and doing what I want to do. So it is very difficult, but you know, at the end of the day, Jason's my son, and I love him very much. I, I shout, look, Mum, this isn't realistic. Move out and concentrate on yourself. I will sort myself out here, no matter how hard it's going to be with the care and everything, you know. And I, and I still won't blame her if she did that, but she's more. We're more friends as well, so she stayed. With I wouldn't her, so blame well. her either. And you like having her here, don't yeah, you? Yeah, 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 yeah. Unable to work, Jason is on benefits, and it's estimated his health care has so far cost the taxpayer hundreds of thousands of pounds. So yeah. at the moment, obviously, you are in the benefit system. That in, in essence, the taxpayer is funding your care. Yes. Yeah. And okay. what do you say to that? What do you say to people that are critical of that, of how much this is costing the taxpayer? Try and be in my shoes, and then we'll discuss. You can discuss. But here's the thing, though. You tell people, try to be in your shoes, like, 
to the per to the average person looking in from the outside, like this is a choice you have made. Yes, you are going through some things, but like you've made a choice to be this big. It's not a diagnosis. It's not a hyperactive hemoglobin or whatever whatever it's called. Um, it's not none of that. From the average person looking at me, if I wasn't watching this and I seen and I knew and I was just like, yo, bro, what's going on? Like, you've made the choice to be this big. You go, like you said it earlier, you was eating donut kebab meat with no sides, straight meat. And juice and pop. Like, you made this choice. You did this. So I'd be a little pressed. As a taxpayer, I would be pressed. But, like, like knowing everything, though, it's like, ah, okay. Still, though, I'd still be pressed. Start as your own opinion in some way. If that makes sense, that's their own opinion. You are deserving yeah. of that money of taxpayers money i believe so i believe so i've, I've got even though 50 percent is my fault of being in this situation 80 percent is your fault i've been misdiagnosed 50 percent, but i don't know and i, I oh don't wait really... he's been misdiagnosed did i miss that wait what did, what was the misdiagnosis reason why I won't go into any of the NHS stuff and that is because I appreciate the fact we've got it. What would you say to people, and this is often a common, common misconception and criticism that is levelled at people who are obese, that it's their fault, that if they just stopped eating, that it wouldn't be a problem, that you would be healthy. Playing devil's advocate, have you brought this on yourself, do you no. think? No. What would you I, say I to know. people? I would say 50% have. But the rest of the fifty percent. Is... Break the numbers down. Where do you get fifty percent, and what what other fifty percent included to it? Online. Now he's vowed to cut down, but insists that dieting no longer works. Now I ain't gonna lie, that pot noodle right there, this hit different. This pot noodle good. <laughs> and what are you eating in a day now? So talk me through your breakfast, lunch, dinner. Dieting no longer works. That's cap. Just gotta stick to it. Okay, well, it would vary, yeah? So, usually it's a sandwich for breakfast, then a sandwich and two yogurts for lunch, and then dinner time, the bowl of rice I said about plain rice with some chicken tonight, sauce with the, with the mushroom in already. Yeah. It's food. And what else? The okay. enemy, would you, how would you describe food? Not now, it's not the enemy. Emily, so yeah. Enemy. It's not because I'm not eating like that anymore. No, nah, what he just said, that was light. I ain't gonna lie. Like, uh, pretty light. I wonder what kind of bread and, and what kind of rice. He said white rice, not like, ain't there no healthier options? But the, the horriblest thing is, I'm still causing myself to sleep because. I know I'm not, and I'm not, I'm not gaining anything from it. I'm not losing weight. When I say gaining, I mean I'm not losing any weight, gaining the effects of not being obsessed anymore. It still, still haunts me because I'm still like this, even though I've made changes. What changes have you made? Just not eat, eating loads of junk and, and stuff my face. In fact, Jason says his only hope now of a normal life is the weight loss drug Wagovi, and without it, he'll die. But now you're looking for a way out in the form of the drug Wagovi. Uh, I hope. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. You're on a wait list, is that right? And you know what's crazy, though? Like, once he loses this weight, the, 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 the council, they're going to take this. He's not going to be able to live in this this bungalow for anymore because somebody else is going to need it they're going to take some of his benefits away he's going to be forced to go to work and then like he might be rendered in another situation after this once he loses the weight something like that yeah um see the thing is i was told they looked at my medical records it won't work and then i was told oh no actually 
we're not saying it won't work. We have a distribution problem with the with the drug. So. How? Meaning that it will may never come to the UK. How does that um, make you feel? That make me feel really bad, you know. You know. So, and and I thought to myself, um, maybe abusing it. when the next election comes, I'll actually vote for another government, and then maybe things might change with the NHS with distributing that drug. But that's not till twenty twenty five. That election. So. Two years. Or, or I believe so anyway. A year and three months. In 2025? I could be dead, for sure. Do you feel like then, Jason, and sorry to put it in such stark terms, but you getting this drug now is a case of life or death? Absolutely. It is, yeah. But whether it will work, or, see, I believe it will at an, at, if it's regularly used how they say, prescribe, I, b- I believe something could work. I believe that's my only hope, is the injection. It is my only hope, that injection. So I'm hoping they will distribute it one, one day. And hopefully I'm still alive to see it. What happens if he doesn't get this drug? I hope too, man. Because we need a part two and an update. If he doesn't get the drug, or they can't give it to him for some reason, then he's still going to be stuck in the same position. Because even though he doesn't eat very much now, he's still got the lymphedema and the lymphedema... Oh, lymphedema. Oh, okay, he does got lymphedema. Oh, the lymphedema is the the parts. Yeah. From the beginning, it is... His legs and his... Hey, Siri! What is lymphedema? Lymphedema, also known as lymphedema and lymphatic edema, is a condition of localized swelling caused by a compromised lymphatic system. Do you want me to keep reading? What is a lymphatic system? Okay, I found this on the web for what is a living back system. Check it out. A lymphatic system. Here we go. Generally, there are chains of groups of all in the fatty tissues and, oh, okay. Stomach, it's at the moment. But then if it starts traveling up to... The lymphatic system is your body's sewage sewage system. Oh. Maintains fluid levels in the body's tissues by removing all fluids that leak out of your blood. Oh, okay. This heart or whatever, then that's a danger zone. Yeah, of course his doesn't work. It's too big. Like, stuff pressing up against it. That's when uh, he's at risk of heart attack and everything. So is it a so, matter of life or death? Yeah, because I, I believe time's over for me in general. But That's a bleak existence. That's tough. I'm coming up 34 now in May. So... 34, bro? You got so much life left. You could be out here, like... Like, when you hit 34, do you know? Like, I don't even think a lot of y'all know what happened. Like, like bro, you just... I know that I, I've, I've got to try something, and that drug, uh, the injection for the weight loss, may... Uh... What's that doctor of Asian descent that be on my 100, 600-pound wife? The one that be keeping it super real? He need him. That could help. Matt could make some changes for my future, yeah. What's your message to the government then in relation to this weight loss drug? Make it priority for people that really need that really need it. Not people that are just just chubby or obese. Because I don't feel that's the problem. I'm in the access, access, access. Mm-hmm. So I feel like I should be a priority to at least be given a try, a six weeks trial of it, just to see. If not, take a step back, that's it. I, I will, and I'll just take being like this as it is. We'll go the inject. Bro, there's, there's so much other stuff you could be doing. The whole attitude that diet doesn't work. Did the dietitian tell you that? I doubt, doubtful. 
think there's a little bit of laziness. Or not at 47 stone with a BMI of 89.1 and body mass index 89.1% fat. Showing no signs of losing weight, Jason's time is running out, but he still holds like out no some muscle? semblance of a normal life. When you think about them, when you think about your future, what do you sort of dream about? What would you love to do, to be able to do? To oh, be able to be thin. You know, go out, man. Go even for a walk, you know. And, and a routine outside. Just go to a busy area and go out, walk. Just feel normal. Hey man, you got you. I, I, I you, you said a lot of good stuff, but man, you got the wrong attitude towards a lot of stuff. Dieting doesn't work anymore. Until you get that pill, you need to go on a strict diet. You still like food too much. If you saying dieting doesn't work, because it does work. It does work. With no exercise, I lost twenty five pounds in one month with dieting. So you're not gonna sit here and tell me that it doesn't work. It's just, your mindset is not. Your mindset is not there. So get get to it, gango. Tell leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notification bells. I'm gone.